We continue now at the top of Dafnun Teslam and Bezim Masech Shabbos. This is Shabbos Daf 59b. The Gemara here is explaining what this um, this ear shell zahav is, which is an ornament. And the Gemara just said that it's like a uh, an ornament with a design of Yerushalayim and it's made out of gold. And the Gemara continues, Rabbi This was something that Rabbi Akiva made for his wife. Tan Rabban, we learned in a bride, so lo seitzah isha bi'ir shel zav, a woman should not go out in this ornament, this ir shel zav, bimyotz to chayev es chatos, divere bi meir. Meir says if she does, it's an isra do raisa, she's chayev es chatos. The chachamim omrim lo seitzah bimyotz to petura. The chachamim say that she shouldn't do it lechatzchila, so it's an isra mid rabbanan, but if she does it, she is potter. Uh, it is not an Isra do raisa. And Rabbi Eliezer omer yotza isha bi'ir shel zav lechatzchila. Rabbi Eliezer is the most lenient, he says a woman can go out with the ir shel zav lechatzchila, no problem at all. What is the issue here in the Brisa? What's the Machlokas? Rabbi Meir Savar Masa. Here Rabbi Meir holds it's considered a burden. It's not considered a part of her clothing or an ornament. And therefore it's an Isra do Rais of carrying. For Rabbonin Savri Tachshidhu, Dil Mashalfa Machavile Vaasya La Suye La Suye. So the Rabbanon hold that it's an ornament, but we're afraid she might take it off to show it to somebody, and then she'll end up carrying it. Rabbi Lazar Savar man darka lemeipach beir shel zav, and Rabbi Lazar holds what kind of woman goes out with this ornament? This is a very expensive item. Isha chashuva, it's an important woman. Isha chashuva lo mechavia, and, we, and a, a, an important woman doesn't take off her jewelry and show it off to people. It's not her nature, and therefore there's no concern whatsoever. Klila, the Gemara now asks, what's the halacha by a uh, tiara, which is also some kind of a, an ornament that's worn on the head? Rav Asar Ushmuel Shari. Rav says it's problematic, it's Asar, and Shmuel says it is permitted. Now the Gemara explains, Da nischa kulial malo pligi da Asar. If it's completely made out of uh, metal, out of gold, is essentially what it was made out of. It could be gold or silver. So if it's, that's what Rashi says. So if it's a nischa, the Gemara says that in such a situation, everybody agrees, that is certainly a problem. Rashi here explains, uh, It's a nice item. We're actually afraid there's a decree that she might show it off. So that everybody agrees to. Uh, they do argue the, uh, the machlokas between Rav and Shmuel is by Aruksa. Aruksa is basically made out of cloth, but it has in it studs of gold and silver. So Mar Savra Nisra Ikr, one holds that even within the Aruksa, the, the, the gold, the precious metal that's inside this item is the main thing and she may show it off and it's going to be a problem. Well, Mar Savra Aruksa Ikr, the other one says, no, this is really an item made of cloth. That's the main component of this item and therefore we don't have a concern. Ravashi Masni Lakula. Now, Ravashi learned everything that we just said. He learned it slightly different, so it ended up being more lenient. And it went as follows. The Aruksa de Kuliyama lo pligi de Shari. By the Aruksa case, that's not a machlokas. There, everybody agrees that it's okay. Ki pligi da And they argue in the case where it's made completely out of gold or silver, totally uh, precious metal. In that case, even there, there's an opinion that says it's not a problem. Mar savar dil mashalfa mechavya vasile suye. One holds again, the woman might take it off and show it to other people, and then she's going to come to carry it. And the other opinion holds, what kind of woman is, is it her way, is it her nature to go out with this item? Uh, it's an important woman. An important woman is not going to take it off and show it off, and therefore it's not a problem. Very similar to what we said before by the Ir Shel Zohav. Gemara now continues, Amar le Rav Shmuel Bar Bar Rav Yosef, Rav Shmuel Bar Bar says to Rav Yosef, Beferish Amritlon Mishmei de Rav, Klila Shari. You said to us explicitly in the name of Rav that Klila is Shari. Now, we already learned before that Rav was the one who said Klila is Osir. So from the, from the fact that Rav Yosef quoted Rav saying it's permissible, uh, it must be that we follow or that he follows that lenient approach of Rav Ashi that even Rav agrees when it's an Aruk, so it's okay. And the whole Machlokas was only by Anisra. Amrule le Rav, they said to Rav, Asa Gavra Rabba Arichla Nahardoi. They said to Rav that there's a a great person, a tall person who came to Nahardoi, Umitla, and he walks with a limp. Vidarash, and he has taught Klila Shari, that Klila is actually permitted. Again, it seems a lot like Rav. Amar, he said, Man Gavra Rabba Aricha de Itla Levi. Who is a person? Who could possibly be this great person who's tall, who walks with a limp? It has to be Levi. Shma mina noch nafshe de Rabbi Yafes. He says, from the fact that Levi is coming here to Nahardoi from Eretz Yisrael, it must be that Rabbi Yafes died. Rabbi Yafes was, uh, was his Rebbe. V'yasev Rebchanina Beresha. And now Rebchanina must have taken over. 
there was no one for Levi to learn by. And he comes over here. Rashi here explains. First of all, Rashi says, uh, This is a story from a different Gemara. Levi ended up injuring himself when he showed Keda, which is a certain kind of bowing, in front of Rebbe. That's a story in the Gemara. Uh, they, they have a note over here that you can find the story in Sukkah, Daf Nun Gimel Amir Aleph. And then it says here, Nach Navshe de Rebbe Office. He says, You see, the Rebbe, Rebbe Ephes died. The Meseches Ksubis Baha no se Amrin de Chishachiv Rebbe Omar. So it says over there in Ksubis that Rebbe said that when he was dying, Rebbe said, Rebbe Chanina Barchama Yoshev Barosh. That Rebbe Chanina Barchama will be the, the leader. Velo Kibel all of Rebbe Chanina, but Rebbe Chanina did not accept the position. Shahi Rebbe Ephes, God only men who stay shunned because Rebbe. Rebbe Ephes was actually two years older than him. The Yosef, Rabbi Ephes, Beresha, and Rabbi, so Rabbi Ephes took the uh, took the uh, Rosh Yeshiva position. When we talk, Shai Rabbi Chanina, Choshev lo nichnas leves midrasho by a Yosef bachutz. So because of the fact that uh, Rabbi Chanina was uh, was Choshev, he didn't want to go into the base matter. He would stay outside. When we shem kavodo Yosef lo Levi etzlam to honor him, Levi would sit by him. So that's essentially what happened over there. So that's why he said, oh, you see that really Rabbi Chanina must have taken over. And now Levi's coming coming to uh, Nahar Doi. So then the Gemara says, manoch One second, how does he know that that's what happened? Maybe, meaning, how does Rav, how did Rav figure that out? Maybe what happened is that Rabbi Chanina died. For Rabbi Ephes, Rabbi Ephes stayed in his position. And that's the, uh, that's the reason why there was no one for Levi to, uh, to learn by. And that's why he came over here. So the Gemara says, It's not true. Because if Rabbi Chanina had died, certainly Levi would have um, humbled himself in front of Rabbi Office. The Su and further, Rabbi Chanina lo sagi de la It's impossible that Rabbi Chanina died because then he would have never been the ruler, so to speak. He would have never been the, the head, the Nasi. And that's not possible. Because we know that when Rabbi died, Amri said, Chanina, Rabbi Chama, Yosef Barosh. He said that Chanina, Rabbi Chama will be the leader. Uh, so he already pronounced that. And what, and what does it say about the tzaddikim? It says, Essentially, that which they decree is going to come true. So we know 100% that uh, Rabbi Chanina would not have died without taking the position as the head. Now, Levi taught in Nahardoi Klila Shari. He said that Klila is permitted. He taught this in Nahardoi. Out of the entire Nahardoi, 24 you were able to see 24 uh, tiaras that were worn through the streets of Nardoi because of this drasha. Darash Rabba Baravua be Mechuzah Klila Shari. Now, when Rabba Baravua said the same drasha in Mechuzah, so Venafku Tamne Sari Klila Mechadam Avoa. There were 18 that came out just of one alleyway. The Gemara continues, Amar Rav Yehuda, Amar Rav Shmuel. So Rav Yehuda says in the name of Rav Shmuel, Kamra Shari. Kamra is permissible. What's a Kamra? Rashi here explains. Kamra Avnei Tchashav. It's a nice belch. Yesha Osen Oso. Tas Shel Zav. They make it out of gold. V'yesh She Osen Oso. Ritzua. Mishpito Zav. Sometimes it's like a strap. Chains of gold. V'yavonim Kavuospo. And there are stones that are set into this uh, into this Avnet. So this kind of a belt. So according to Rav, uh, Rav Yehuda, in the name of Rav Shmuel, it is permitted. Ika da amri da ruksa, similar to what we said before. Some people say it's made out of cloth and it just has metal within it. The Amar of Safra and Rav Safra says midi da have a talis musheves. It's similar to a talis that's made out of gold, which is also a tachshit. And we're not afraid someone's going to throw it off. Rash, uh, someone's going to show it off. Rashi says because it's not normal to take people don't take off their belts uh, in in uh, in Rishus Harabim in the shuk. And then, obviously, then their clothing are not going to be able to remain on them properly. Now, some people say that the that the camera we're talking about is actually made out of metal. According to that position, the reason why it's permitted, it's similar to the avnet of Melochim, which was made completely out of uh, metal. And uh, since the uh, since Kol, Rashi says Kol Yisrael b'nei Melachim, since all Kol Yisrael is considered b'nei Melachim, just like the Melachim are allowed to uh, wear it, so to uh, regular people can wear this item. Amar le Ravina le Ravashi Kamro Eloi Hamayna Mai. So Ravina says to Ravashi, what if you would have this kind of belt on another kind of belt, essentially wearing two belts? Amar le said back to him, Tre Hamayni Kam. Are you talking about having two belts? Uh, the way Rashi understands it, for sure that's considered a Masoi. That would be a problem. Amar Ravashi, Ravashi says, Hi, Rasuka, I Isle Mafra Chaisa Shari, Vilo Osir. 
Rashi explains Rasuke Khatichas Mi'il Rukhava, this is like a kind of a wide coat. So Iisle Mefarchyasa, Ritsuos Kitsaras, Tuluyos Bala Kosha Bamula Hadka Svivosov. He basically got these short straps that you can make it tight around the person. Shari, the Mahadik Shapra, it's gonna stay on properly. Velekal Mechash Dilma, Mishtari Katari, Vinafil Vasilasi. We're not afraid, it's gonna fall off and you're gonna come to carry it. Then the Mishnah said, Velo Bekatla, the Gemara says, My Katla, what is a Katla Minakta Pari? Uh, Rashi gives two explanations what Menakta Pari means. Either it means some kind of uh, almost like a bib. It was a chashav type of item that had gold on it uh, and it was worn to catch crumbs. Or the other explanation is it was almost like a necklace, but it went through the fabric, the material of the clothing. Nizamim, another item that said that she she's uh, she's n- she's not allowed to go out in was uh, Nizamim rings. And the Gemara says, Nizme Ha'af, it refers specifically to nose rings. Rashi here says, Aval Nizme Ha'ozen Mutarn L'Chatzchila. When it comes to uh, rings of the ear, earrings, those are okay. And even the chatzchila, they're okay. The trichola milsa la mishla v'achvuye mipnei sh'aznem mechusas b'kishon. It's much more difficult to take those off and show them off because the ears are usually covered up, so it's a more difficult thing to do. But the nizmi ha'af, we're afraid that she's uh, she's going to show it off and she's going to and she's going to essentially carry it. Below b'tabas she'ino lechosam. Then it said that she cannot go with a ring that does not have a signet on it. So the Gemara says, Hayezha lechosam chayeves. The implication over here is that if it has a uh, chosam, then she's chayev achatas. That's not even considered a tachshit at all, and it's considered a burden. Alma lav tachshit, that implies that this is uh, not a tachshit. Or a minna, but we have a contradiction. Tachshite noshim temeim. It says that the ornaments of women are tomei. Ve'elo hein tachshite noshim. And the following are considered ornaments for women. Katalos, nezamim, v'tabos, v'tabas, bein she'eshel achosim, bein she'enel achosim. It says explicitly whether or not it has a signet, it's considered to be tame and it's considered to be an ornament. Uh, and then the Brisa finishes off, and then the nose rings. So Amar Rabbi Zeir, Rabbi Zeir says, Lokash, Harab Nechemia, Harab It's not difficult, it's actually a machlokas between Rabbi Nechemia and the Rabbonin regarding these t- uh, tabas that does not have a uh, regarding a tabas that, sorry, that has a chosam, whether or not that's considered a burden. The Tanya we learned in a Brisa. He shall not teches v'chos meshel almug. This was quoted a little earlier in the Masechta. If the ring is made out of metal and the signet part is made out of wood, so then to me it's considered tame. He shall almug if the ring is made out of wood, the chos meshel mateches, and then the signet part is made out of metal tahora. Then it's considered tar. So according to the rabbanon, it goes by the ring, the ring, whether or not we consider it uh, to be tame or not. We follow the ring, not the signet. But Rabbi Nechemia metame. Rabbi Nechemia says it's tame. When it comes to a tabas, when it comes to a ring, we follow the signet. And Rashi here explains, According to Reb Nechemia, the main tabas follows after the chosem. So then in that case, she's going to be chayev achatas, to chosem le'ishal av tachshidu. Because for a woman, a chosem is not a tachshid. De'ein derech le'ishal achsom. It's not, it's not the normal nature of a woman to be signing documents with a signet ring. So since Rabbi Nechemia says we follow the chosem to determine whether it's tummy or not, he would also say the chosem is the ikr, and therefore it would render it not a tachshid. That's essentially what the Gemara is answering. And of course, according to the Rabbanan, that's not the case. Um, the Gemara says, uh, continuing Rabbi Nechemia, so when it comes to a tabas, we follow the chosem ba'ol. When it comes to a yoke, halach achar salmonov. We follow the salmonov. Rashi explains, halach uh, achar salmonov im shel matachas heim tome. We follow the salmonov, and if they are made out of metal, it's tome. Salmonov, Rashi says, ha'ol shalahem lo ya pogim kishalanu ala cholak v'noklum bo shnei nekavim uvei neyem ka'ovei oref ashor. Essentially, the yokes that they would put on the axe, they would have, they would be a, uh, they would be smooth. They would have two holes, and then you would put um, you would put boards of wood that were basically the thickness of the neck of the axe. The ben and then the two yesedos that they would use to uh, to uh, to fix these things, they were called simlonim. And we follow those items if they're made out of metal, then it's tame, and if not, not. And we'll continue the, uh, the discussion of Reb Nechemia uh, in the next video on Daf Samech Amar Aleph.